I have to start like this every time now. Well, one viewer and then nervous, but this will today will be a quick one. Um, yeah, let's let's wait a minute or two. Well, everybody has time to join. So, what did we do last time? Remember? Too much stuff here. Come on. This is not funny. There. So, remember we had this bug with the overlays and the scripting that we fixed and today was the plan to be working on it. It's actually logging everybody. No. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I added something that shows you the that should show you. It should show you the overlays, so you can follow along a bit better. Um, so quick, a quick overview, very very quick overview. At, we had episode zero on Thursday where I did that overview. Um, let me turn off my monitor here because I have a nasty echo on it. Off. Okay, I hope you're still hearing me. So in episode zero, we did this this very real quick overview, and and I wanted to do that again since it's not archived, that you not, might have no clue what we're talking about. So we're talking about fish, and fish is a little sorry. This is a test build. Right? Use this one. Fish is a little game I made for a game jam in 2008, 2009. Uh, basically, in four, four or five hours, it was one of these eight hour game jams. And, and after four hours, I, I started to play instead of finishing it. And that's where it ended up. Uh, in 2012, I, I had a bit of time on my hands, so I spent about two weeks to get it polished and into the store and learning the ins and outs of the of the iOS App Store. Um, I went pretty smooth and I got quite a bit of downloads, so, so I spent another <clears throat> three months to port it to Android, and actually the port was super quick, but getting it into the store was a nightmare. That's the reason why there is no Android version anymore. Um, let me show you the game. game. This is the old version running. So very, very super simple gameplay. Um, this is a debug build, so we got some extra buttons. But basically, you hold the screen to go down, you release the screen to go up. And obviously, you try to avoid hitting the obstacles while collecting as many coins as you can. And then that's that's it right now. There's a shop to spend the coins, but that was never released. So we'll look into that later. Um, I stopped working on this game four years ago. Actually, I didn't realize I did and then started again about two weeks ago. It was supposed to be just uh, I have to stop playing. Let, let's let's die here. Let's run into this rock and die. Um, the idea was to do a very quick update, just update news to newest Xcode version, recompile, push to store. And as good plans go, that didn't work out as intended. So um, in four years, the underlying technology changed quite a bit, so I had to update, do some SDK updates, update to the new new Xcode and then compiler version. Uh, then I tried to to upload, and there were some rules regarding uh, privacy, privacy statements for the, the 
privacy rules for, for the game and so I added that and then it wanted screenshots for iPad Pro and stuff and I remember back then I did all the screenshots manually and four screenshots times four devices that I'd need right now it's just not gonna fly so so I started uh, to to script the, the screenshots so um, a while ago I started to use Fastlane to build the project and, and Fastlane also has, has a tool to do automated screenshots. So I wanted to use that. And so I started to use that and realized, oh, Fastlane only works with UI tests. So I've wrote a UI test that uh, does the screenshots and, and extended the scripting. Uh, the Lua, we used to use Squirrel scripts earlier and then switched the scripting engine to Lua for another game I did two years ago and so I had to update to Lua and long story short uh, it's not updated yet and, and but, but I'm, I'm aiming for the for the 2.1 release as soon as I can um I'll go into the game a bit later. Let, let me tell you a bit about the project setup. So, so I'm mostly when I work, I use, use Sublime for all Sublime text for all the non code or non game code and, and Xcode, obviously for development. Um, let's, let's close this so you get, get a rough overview. Uh, we have two targets, which is the binary and, and the tests, which I just mentioned where we go into the tests in a special episode. Um, this needs some cleanup. Um, the way I usually work is, uh, since I don't have a lot of time to work on this a few minutes here and there, I usually cram in the functionality and then clean it up. And, and sometimes the cleanup step doesn't happen. That's why stuff like this happens. Um, so we have the app. Let, let's, let's look here. So this is the uh, iOS specific specific stuff. So the app delegate, the one default shader, the game view controller, the main storyboard, and and I switched to launch screen storyboard from from launch launch images just last week and, and this is going well. Save means we don't have to have 50 versions of the launch screen and just one that's auto scaling. We'll go into that in in a special I guess. Then we have all the application specific code. Um, I have no clue why this is not sorted alphabetically in the newest version anymore. I have to look into that. But basically, this is the game logic. And, and sometimes I create things that then get pushed down to the base library. But basically, this is the game. And, and this is the main entry point for the app. Um, the C C++ version is all over the place. It started out as C++ 98, then I switched uh, recently to 2011. So, so it's a mishmash of both, but I'm not touching code just for the sake of touching code. So you see old school include guards in some files, and then you see more modern pragmas in other files. Uh, what I always do is everything is namespaced. Uh, just just to avoid conflicts and time count is actually the most recent uh, thing I added. So you see a lot of stuff here. We're not going into into game specific logic today. I'd say we just do a very very quick overview. Um, so then we have this OM OMLib. Uh, you see V3. This is basically grown over the last twenty years, and as you can see, I rewrote it twice, well, more than twice, but twice the changes were so breaking that I just started from scratch so this is all reusable stuff and actually this has been split into OM GFX for the graphics and recently OM game for component based uh, reusable game components and so in here we have um, obviously platform specific code for iOS but also shared code which is more generic and then in there we have various modules and you see here the the graphics is kind of clutched in because it's supposed to be moved out but this version hasn't moved in and, and we have scripting which is all the lua scripting also also the 
everything is abstracted away so we have scripting but the caller or the game doesn't need to know it is lua there's an abstraction layer in there we have a tracking layer um tracking is currently disabled uh, it used flurry but flurry stopped working a while ago we have the backend module which does server communication high score and stuff like that other yeah i want to get rid of this as soon as possible it was was good back then but it has some problems and then Basically, there's some broken code in SDB image. This is the UI layer. So there are various bases, basic UI components. I, I guess UI is also um, a thing we we go into a special UI episode. Um, the basis is the UI control. Everything is a UI control, and then it's just a hierarchy of children that know how to lay out each other and stuff. And root is just a special UI control that you can use as a basis um, and then we have buttons and images and we go into this later then we have platform code right now it's only the score and, and score is, is not even implemented uh, we have the application specific code again some platform specific things we will we'll dig into that when when we come to it base has has is this a basis for everything so has stuff from the basic type so yeah it's 2019 no need to abstract away the types but this is 20 years old and it's nice to have standardized types like uh, un64 that just work everywhere or float 32 or whatever you need um time time astoundingly complex on if, if you go cross-platform and and this library started out on a Nintendo DS and worked on a Wii and worked on um, on a PlayStation 3 and an Xbox and what am I forgetting? Then, then later got ported to Windows and Mac OS and Linux and now works on iOS. And in theory, it should still work on Android. So, so abstracting away stuff. So as a game developer, I just want time. So I don't care. We have... Um, string handling we could just use str comp str dupe whatever but some platforms don't support that and sometimes it's not a good idea so this is also just abstracted away uh, we have resource management resource factory resources we'll we'll go into later um, we have a file system so basically i want a file and and the game really just wants the data. It doesn't care if it's in a zip file that's baked into an APK or if it's on a server or if it's on a disk and might need a caching layer to load faster. So the game just takes a file and then, then we have archive files or disk files or of real file, native file system files. Um, we have this thing called layered file system, which basically says, okay, um, I give you this layered file system, and whenever you want a file, I check all the file systems that are in there to find what you need. For example, you download a campaign for a game, and we just layer the campaign on top, and you don't have to worry about handling which file, to, file archive is what, and we just have this big file system. It's also nice for development, because uh, there's this, um, it's not active right now, but there's this hot resource reloading, so... If I play in the simulator, but save the file on the, for example, this case, MacBook uh, file system, then it can hot replace inside the game without me me having to recompile. Um, CRC32, yeah, configuration, statistics, memory management. Uh, so base has a lot of stuff. Um, we have compression, we have uh, graphics. This, this is generic graphics, so textures, debug renderers, materials, atlas system, render effects, models, fonts, textures. So this is mostly independent of the renderer. Some of these like texture have a, have a generic component and a hardware specific component, which then points to the, to the buffer ID, for example. Um, with graphics is a whole story in itself. Yeah, image, the Atlas Composer is here. It could be split out, but it's also the Atlas Reader. Uh, classic mass, um, starting from basic functions like uh, sinus, cosinus, which again, on a system like a Nintendo DS might not be there and might be tables, while on Windows, we just call them native version. 
uh, vector classes, matrix classes, circle classes, the uh, race circle intersection. I have no idea what I use this for. Probably a shooter I did sometime. And X with the mind rectangle in game, especially two days, is one of the most used things. There's a rectangle here, but it's in the wrong folder. A particle system, classic, particle emitters, managers, systems. You can have multiple. It's no singletons in this. Um, that's a whole different story. Um, so yeah, this is OMLIP, uh, lots of basic stuff. And I'm probably going much too fast, but just rewind the stream and ask again. So we have lips here, which is empty. We have the UI tests, which we will go into when we go into the UI tests. Frameworks, um, all the collisions are box 2D. I just was lazy. I mean, it's, it's just line, line, or line, or polygon, polygon collisions, and that, that's super easy, but box just worked out of the box. No pun intended. And so I just used that. And then here's some, some code that is inside fish, but I know it needs to be inside the library. So this is kind of already pre highlighted, but not pushed into the library yet. Obviously, standards for the library are higher because there are multiple projects that use that library. So I don't want to break it while if I break this game, I, I don't care. So we have stuff like uh, tracking again, flurry is disabled. We have ads, uh, we use chart boosting. Yeah. We have a box 2D debug draw routine. We have sound bank handling. So Nowhere in the game we say play the this WAF file and do magic. We basically have a sound bank that has some configurations and you just say play FX, hit, or shoot, or or collect coin, and then that system knows what to do. And if I spawn 50 collect coins, do I really want 50 collect coins? Or do I just want the first 10 and then ignore the last 40? Or do I want the when, when number 11 comes in, want to kill the first one and quick fade out. So it's all, we just do play sound effect. And and obviously, yeah, we use uh, Cocoa Pods um, for, for external dependencies like IWS for, for crash tracking and, and some te telemetry. And, and chart, chart Boost is also a pod. Uh, how are we doing for time? So I only have about one and a half hours today. Uh, it's Saturday night and it's been a rough day. So I'm going to make it short, but I promise to do this intro session. And am I actually live? Give me one second to check something. And yes, I should know by now. Again, until I trust the pro. And yeah, controller helps. Looks like I'm live. Yeah, this was very fine because this this old setup is still mute for me. So this is the Xcode side, so all the code for the game, but there's more to it. So let's switch to Sublime. And usually I have the sidebar off, but I have it on for you. Um, so obviously we have the same folders that, that you just saw. It's just a, that you just saw. It's just the just same base folder. Everything is in there. Uh, the OM library is, a, is an extra Git module. And we're actually planning to move out the data to a separate Git module. So artists cannot accidentally break code, which is always a good idea. No. Obviously, assets tend to be large. Talking about assets, so you see assets and content here, and it's a bit historic. And so assets is everything we need outside of the game, like marketing material for the app store and stuff. And you see converters and not going into this. Then we have content, and content is basically the raw assets the artists create, like backgrounds. Um, this is quite big here, and, and backgrounds, 
our default texture that shows up everywhere where we're using a texture that doesn't exist. The decorations, for example, the bubble, the small bubble, the jellyfish, uh, I'm not sure the jellyfish is in, the, the fish uh, with, with all its animations. And funny story here, um, the animation was created in Spine and the base library supports Spine. For some reason, we still went for frame-based animation for the fish. And, well, that's the way it is for now. We have fonts. Uh, I think none of them are in there, but but we weren't sure which font to use, so we put them in and put a button in so we could cycle and see what looks best. Uh, UI stuff like buttons. Uh, we, As you can see, we use GIMP as a base format. It's, it's yeah, and, and we crossfade between these. So, so lots and lots of UI stuff in here. Um, that's closest. Obviously, the game needs an icon. So again, gigantic. And then the converters. Talk, we'll talk about the converters in a minute. But the converters will create the downscaled versions that we need. Uh, the loading screen, yeah, it's just the default screen. Again, very big. Uh, the music. Uh, the music was basically a 10-minute hack by me in, in GarageBand. And yeah, that's, that's good enough. Better than launching a game without music. Then, then we have new zones and zones. So old zones was just basically text file where you where you wrote down, okay, this is the name of the zone, the difficulty, the widths, uh, and there's some stuff here, and there's some seaweed, and there's some rocks, and by the way, here's some coins, and here's some more coins, and this was very tedious to create the zones. So we switched to new zones uh, in. 2012, and and we use Tilet for that. So it, Tilet just tosses out these these XML files, and I'm not a fan for, of XML for this, but it's it's pretty readable. And I'll I'll go into how to edit a level and a zone in Tilet um, at a later point. Talking about zones, so we don't have levels. We have zones that have various difficulties, and whenever. Whenever you finish one zone, a random zone, that's roughly your difficulty level gets spawned. So, so no run, no, no two runs are the same. Well, statistically they could be, but they aren't. Um, we have the obstacles. So the block is from another game, but initially we use these white blocks as placeholders for, for the game. Uh, we have corals in various uh, sizes and these are not animated yet. We have, other things, for example, the anchor that's in there. We have rocks, lots and lots and lots of rocks in different sizes, and we use them upside down at the top. And we have seaweed, again, uh, frame-based animation, and don't ask what we were thinking. Uh, pickups, uh, we have the coin, and the coin is actually spinning, as you can see, and then we have the blue coin and the green coin, and every game with pickups needs a magnet, so we have the magnet. Um, we have the scripts, which is basically the, the screenshot script screenshot script in Lua. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Lua. I'm not good at Lua, but it's it's doing the job. So, and this is what we've been debugging last, what we've been working on last session. Remember, we, we ensured the yield after the request screenshot, so we don't get the remove before in the same frame. Uh, we have the shop um, ideas to upgrade the coin coin explosion, the coin rain, and, and the magnet. And I, sorry, dry throat. So ideas to spend your coins to upgrade your your fish, and it's basically yeah, the usual. We have sound, not a lot of sounds. We have the sound bank in here, bank in here and, and basically you see here, it's the ID, which which file, uh, the number of maximum instances and, and what to do when, when the drop mode. So if we have more than 10, we kill the oldest. In this case, we always kill the oldest, oldest and only the bubble loop loops. The bubble loop loops, yeah. And, and then we have the, the audio files here. Uh, we have a config file here. 
Salem Siri, the full game is skinnable. Uh, at one point, we had a space rocket flying game, which only changed this far. This is not fully true. We never completed that, but but it's a start. So you, the idea was to just have configuration and then then have everything data driven from here. And then the balancing also comes from here, like the collect range, the magnet range, the magnet speed, uh, stuff like that. So this is content, and this content has to go into the game somehow, and that's where data comes in. So basically, we have a lot of converters, and I'll, we'll look into that in a bit, that take all the, all the content and know how to create the runtime version of it. Obviously, this config file is not going to save be saved in this format. It's going to be a binary compressed format that also does some sanity checks, for example. Hey, you're telling me, let's see, the player move is the fish swim, so the fish swim is this, and I cannot find this file. It's better to, to realize this at build time and not at runtime or at QA time. So, so convert it to two things. They sanity check stuff. They filter out stuff we don't need. They they optimize the format. For example, a Mac or iOS loading a PNG is easy peasy. If you're on a Nintendo DS, you might need a very specialized format for, for textures. And doing that at runtime might not be the smartest idea. So converters do that too. And they sometimes they just they do things like rescale. So so as you can see, the assets, uh, the the content is is the same for every platform. So the size of the fish dying or the fish swimming is always the same, but depending on the screen size, we might need different resolutions and, and converters vertices can also do that like small screen or low DPI version, just scale down all the images 50%, no need to waste the texture space. Or they might extract for platforms that don't have an alpha channel, extract the alpha channel into a second texture and, and so on. So lots of magic going on in converters and um, I think converters will be something I'll be working on for quite some time because digging into the converters, there's, there's this tools directory here. And as you can see, there's a lot of Ruby stuff in here. There's also a lot of shell scripts and there is some Swift scripts. So 15 years ago, it was a good idea to write converters in Ruby and uh, in 2019 with different Ruby versions on different systems. So we have the Windows build, the Mac build, the Linux build, developers work on different platforms, artists work, work on different platforms. It's just a nightmare to have the right Ruby version there. And so the idea is to rewrite all of this in Rust. I'm not very experienced in Rust. I did a little side project last year, but the idea is once the 2.1 is out, take all these tools, rewrite all of them in Rust, and just have basically a single file, which is probably, I don't know, OMT for Omnimat tools. And then you just say, okay, I want the Packer, I want the Shaper, I want the SoundBank converter, I want the CRC to HPP converter, and then you just plug them in. All of that will be in a GitHub repository and fully open source from the start. It might be totally broken Rust code, but step one is um, get binary identical output. So that's that's upcoming after 2.1, and that's when we look deeper into the converters. Um, let's look a little bit into the converters, because what we basically do... Um, there used to be these these scripts, and, and it was nobody really knew how to run them. Well, I did, but um, so basically, all you have to do is run this uh, pack all script, and then it will pack all the atlases. So combine all the textures as needed into minimum amount of textures. Pack the fonts, the shapes, which is the collision shapes, uh, the shaders, the sound, the tones, the configs, the scripts, and then pack it all. And the pack basically takes everything that's that's in the pack list in the data directory and puts it in one binary file. And that binary file then gets linked into the game. So not not some games I've seen, especially indie games, you open a subfolder of the game and have like 8,000 TGA files. Uh, not going to happen. It's one single binary blob with a checksum that's signed that could be compressed and even updated over the year. So as you can see, 
this is shell script. It's it's a bit cleaned up to to be a bit nicer to see what's going on, but it's still very historic. And and the Atlas, uh, as you can see, this when you need to convert it, you just hack it together because usually you want to implement a game feature and you don't care how the data gets there. And, and what a lot of smaller teams do is they just manually convert the data. So run image magic or graphics magic or uh, Photoshop plugin and manually export the asset to the data format they need. And then three months later, they say, oh, I want this in a different shade of green. And nobody remembers what, what they did. So rule one, even if it's one liner, put it into a script and score, store the script. And then these things tend to explode, but at least it's rerunnable. I check out on a new system, just run the script and, and everything is working, assuming all the tools are there and, and we'll go into, into the tools a bit later. They've, they've grown historically and there's, for example, Omni Texture is a texture packer Atlas maker that, that grew over 20 years and it's probably a nightmare by now or the, the matte font, uh, which which does some magic to create uh, distance field based fonts and packs them together. Let me let me have a quick look. Um, uh, we're not using this font, but basically, a font is two files. It's the own font file which says, "Hey, this is a position and, and some metadata about the font at kerning, and and then it packs it optimally together." Uh, so that's what the Matt Fonda does and loads and loads of other tools. So, yeah, and, and the CHC to, to HPP is, um, we'll look into that, but basically on systems like the Nintendo DS, you never store the strings of file names. You just use a CRC32, which is four bytes, and, and usually that's a CRC of a file name, but you need to have a defined way to generate that. And, Basically, that's this Ruby magic here. Um, that's not yours. The make shape is is reading in XML, which uh, I forget what the tool was. That was a tool that creates the outlines and then takes the PNG and the XML and combines it into a shape file. And basically, this is something you, we will use a lot when we rewrite the the converters cause. This defines the binary output format, and, and this is this is a zone. It will output a zone. Oh, nice! It cannot do shift cursor. <coughs> so data file starts with with some magic version. Uh, then uh, then magic for the what is it? Is it compressed? Uh, packs this together and. and we're not going into converters today. Sorry for, for being a bit unfocused today. So that is tools, and we we'll look into tools a lot. Um, yeah, and as you can see, uh, OM graphics is already here, but it's currently not used in the project because it was extracted from OMLib uh, in a different project, and I totally forgot that fish exists when I did this. So so this version is just a different branch. And, it works. Um, so what else do we have? Yeah, we have our pods, uh, AWS Core, Pinpoint, the Chart Boot, Boost SDK, um, Temp. We have some converter stuff here that, that that's needed because some of the converters don't work in memory. They need temporary files, unfortunately. Um, we have all the fast line stuff, which is used for building and the screenshots. Uh, we we have the screenshots now for for the different versions of the game, so it it's work in progress. We have metadata like uh, copyright notice and, and categories. So I'm not touching iTunes Connect manually because because every time I touch it, there they change something or it's breaking. So I'm using Fastlane to update the the metadata, and we're using uh pilot or deliver to to upload the binaries and do test flight builds and stuff and also we have a um, s3 instant that has a web interface where you can deploy ad hoc builds um, 
I think that's the overview. And last time we we used the Notepad file to see what's going on. What I usually do is um, there used to be this to do.txt. It's now the markdown file. And let's look at So I'm working mostly alone on this. So this is good enough. And I really need to let's stop this for. Let's stop this for a moment. Um, so whenever I stumble across something or have an idea, I just put it into the to-do section. So it's either here or in the later, meaning I want to do this, but I'm not doing it now. And, and to-do is basically, uh, this is roughly the next two, one, two, maybe three releases. When I start working on something, I just move it up to in progress. So we're just writing the script for the for the screenshots. And basically this this is mostly sub parts of it. And then later we do controller support. Uh, we want to merge a game object from, from the base lib. We want to replace STB image and stuff. And when stuff is done, it goes down here. And then when, when I do a release with the build number, I just is moved down here. So, how are we doing for time? It's 10 past seven. Uh, you got a quick overview. I'm I'm a bit tired, so I'm, I'm gonna start um, with working on this, but I'm not sure how far this is gonna go. So let's just say the too many open windows. So the goals for today. Mm. I don't want to go into the title screen. Well, actually, the title screen is um, yeah, too too many too many keyboards here. Um, the title screen is is a good good thing to start with. So. Add title screen to screenshot script. Um, if I find some time, um, let me go back here. I realize that the distance is broken because we're setting the distance in meters explicitly from from the script. If you if you check this. It's just to make the screenshot look nicer. So we fake like the coins and, and then we set the distance in meters. And actually, uh, this is pixels because we run in pixels and the, the meters are just conversion. So I need to add the scaling factor there. And I think that's, that's a nice thing to, to get into, into this. So fix, fix that distance. And, and when we can, Oh, yeah, the screenshot script timing, and this basically is what I just said. So let's let's move this up, and this is what we did last time. And this is the roadmap. The roadmap release 2.0. Convert, 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 just convert tools and converters to rust and this will be very interesting and this is where i will need your help but today let's do these two and now that i see it i didn't realize last time because i wasn't listening to the music i had it turned off i didn't realize how annoying the game music is when we step through the debugger like get five frames of music Stop in a breakpoint. Wait a second. Get five. You you know what I mean. So so today I just turned turned this off. Uh, the music is still working. You're just not hearing it. Uh, sorry about that. So let's dive straight in. So before I start doing anything, I usually check my Git status. I have no idea why Caster. Where is where's the button to ah, I I just quit this for now. 
Oops. <coughs> this has to be cut out. So I modified the to do. I, I shuffled some things around in preparation for this cast and decided to do 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 these things later. So they just moved down. And always good to start on a clean commit. Uh, updated to do. Again, we're using a rebase based workflow, whole different story. And again, the, the censored to do. So loading screen, which, which will be an interesting beast because the loading screen needs to be in the marketing assets. So let's look into Pack Atlas and please, this is messy, but, and, and you see these if true here, the, the build Atlas wasn't smart up until two weeks ago. So it just brute force built everything, even if nothing changed. So this was a quick way to say, hey, I know I didn't update it. So, so just set this to false and skip it. And, and you see down here, for example, the seaweed atlas. Build an atlas with this, this template for the name. Use size two, size two is 240, 2048. Um, and the border should be two. And then um, take all these assets that match these globs and put them into these atlases. And then, then we have the build atlas function here, some shell bash magic, actually it's bash, not shell, but we get lucky. And then some um, some script magic to, to have some nice output. And I really, this is something I stole from Fastline. This used to be text only output and just adding emoji or icons into this text helped so much. Let's Let's just, Touch content, content decoration, and uh, decorations is a bad thing. Let's let's use the pickups, pickups, coin, just just. Assume an artist fixed the bug in some asset. And, and then you just run pack atlas. And it will run over all of them. Coin was a very smart idea because it has like five, five gazillion faces. But here we are. So it runs over, over the whole atlas file and says, okay, for the GUI atlas, I need all these files, all these files, but none of them are changed. So none of them are changed means none of these files is newer than any of these files in the data directory. So no updates, let's just skip it. Same for the dev atlas, same for the shop atlas, for the game atlas. Uh, but the game atlas contains coin or five. So if any has a change, I mean, the size might have been bigger or smaller, so it doesn't fit in the atlas. So we just rebuilt the whole freaking thing. And, and this is actually debug output from the Atlas. Um, it's, it's loading a lot of files to, to figure out the sizes. Then it's sorting them. And then it's actually, I'm not sure why the line breaks are gone. Usually there are line breaks in here, but then, then it's fitting a oh, nice pattern here. Um, then it's fitting the content into the, Atlas by size, uh, it's a max rack based algorithm, uh, no need to get onto that. Basically, take the biggest thing, put it in, takes a second biggest thing, put it in if it doesn't fit, uh, create a second uh, file, second Atlas file and, and so on. So, so that's why you usually end up, we can have a quick look in data, game Atlas zero, and I actually see there was an error at some point, but but basically, we start with the biggest ones, and then we get smaller and smaller as we go down and to the right. And it's intentionally doing it like the top top corner, 
So that means I have maximum space for big ones here. And this atlas is actually far too big. We could probably get a second game in, in this or a third on you, you fish files. The nice thing is if everything is one, in one texture, we can use the same render settings and don't have to switch the render batch or do some magic. It's just offsets in the texture coordinates. And you can see here at the corners, it's actually, um, when you use the border option, it, it's some, it's extracting the border for reasons I'm not going to go into right now. So it checks if it has to copy anything. If there's any new or if the force is on it, it will do it. And then it will use Omnitech and say, Hey, do it. And this we'll go into when we look into the converters more. Um, and then Omnitexture creates this map files. This, the map file, the map file actually is in the temp here. So let's have a quick look. Um, so OTX is this Omnimap texture format and, and this could just be a raw PNG with some header obviously in it. It could be Apple PNG, it could be DCT, it could be anything the platform needs. So it's just an abstraction layer and this is a temporary directory I talked about. And now we have the game atlas OTX. And, and on iOS we use PNG, so we have OTX and then extract the then use it the PNG, and then we have the map file, and the map file basically says, okay, you put I put fish die zero dot PNG at this position with this size. So again, this is this is readable format which helps for debugging, but isn't really nice for runtime. So we have this um, Ruby script texture atlas RB, which basically loads the map file and then saves an atlas file. So loading the map file, it's just for each line, do some magic, do the CRC mapping that, that we talked about, grab the coordinates out of, debug print them, and we, we saw that in the output. And the two atlas again, creates an atlas file, magic header, what data type is in there? Is it compressed? So every single data type can be zlib compressed. Theoretically, any compressor, but we only use zlib and, and for stuff like text files or nearly empty textures. Or it's it's a good idea to compress for other things like DCT compressed textures. Zipping them is is not a smart move. And then for every texture, it just creates the binary file and there's a loader side on the other side, which I'm not going into today. <coughs> so that's the pack atlas. And, and that's what you're seeing here. So it created the new atlas. Oh, I should have picked the smaller one and seaweed again, no changes. So nothing changed. So if you look into the pack, all, oh, all, oh, it, runs everything and nothing changes so so in the end it goes to the pack script and just runs the pack script and the pack script says hey there were, were a few pngs that were updated i have no clue why background png was updated but but well some some things were updated so let's just package all and this is basically checked in the newer file check, which was recently glued on, and it's rewritten for every asset type, which is not a smart way to do it. And then it creates this pack file and just calls the Ruby packer. And, and don't ask Matt OEM. There was some naming scheme behind this 15 years ago, which which was long forgotten. And Basically, um, it goes over every file that we that we told it to use. So for for every file, um, add it to the pack file, and at the end, just write the pack file. And um, we can all there's two different modes. It could be a pack file or from the command line. But in any case, it 
it just adds and, and this is again super simple so i'm not going into ruby syntax right now but basically um we add the entry. The entry has a has a base pass and a file name. Base pass mangling is a bit of magic, but we don't. We want relative passes in in the results. So, so this is what's going on here. It just downloads, creates a CHC32, and and I think the writer is more interesting. <laughs> it's an OmniMed archive. And don't ask why this has only four while all the others has eight. That's that's historic, and. Um, yeah, and it's a V2 because we needed some flags. Um, and the flags are, will it contain the raw file names, which is nice for debugging if you're loading CRC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. And what file was that? I have no clue. So for debugging, we can add the file names. So we do that. Uh, it writes a number of entries. Um, four bytes is probably too much. but uh, And then writes all the files just there and then and copies the file data at the end. So binary block, not what we're looking at. So what we actually wanted to do, remember, remember our goal, remember our goal here, add title screen to screenshot script. So let's look at our screenshot script. So or let me so we have four screenshots that we need. We have the we have the title screen, which is the first screen in the store. Let me Yeah, that's better. So this is a fee shown page. I'll put a link in the show notes and this is an app store link. And these are the screenshots we're talking about. So we have the title screen. We have the the basic, the game just started, nothing is going on, distance and coins is zero. Um, we have the light blue background and we have to help fish to find all the, all the coins. Then we have the coin explosion, a bit of distance here and the dark blue background. We'll talk about the background a bit later. We looked into that briefly last time. And yes, I will keep repeating. And then we have this even further along um, coin rain screen with with the explore the deep sea overlay and and the overlays already work so i'm tempted just to cheat and use an overlay overlay for this and turn this off again yeah so we have this. Um, massive loading screen. Right. Sorry about that. I'm pretty sure. Oh. We have this screen here. So the easiest way is so the system doesn't support raw text just right now for for reasons that some platforms only support power of two textures, some some only support textures that are square and so so the easiest thing is just to toss it into an atlas so how do we toss it, toss something into an atlas i mean that's easy we use pack atlas and look we have a marketing overlay atlas here and and the easiest thing is and and i'm going to copy it so in assets there is no loading screen yet but 
there's a reason why we copy and not move. Remember, the fish v2 is the iOS specific data directory, and I want to keep it that way. And at some point, Apple might say, oh, you're not allowed to use blue color in loading screens or whatever. No text or no version number or build number. Or... So I want to separate between the store screenshot and, and this one. Let's see how this turns out. So I just copy this to assets and obviously edit. And now I just say assets loading screen. We could have probably called this um, overlay three loading screen or overlay zero. Actually, I like that. Let's undo this. So, overlay zero title.png. Was a bit fast with the adding there, but better add it too early than forget it later. So, overlay zero title. And good, well, guess what? We do a pack atlas. We could just do a pack all. I'm lazy and don't want to wait. And this laptop is seven years old. So we're packing the atlas and then we're just going to pack it. And so the overlay was updated after the atlas file. So it's creating a new atlas and everything is cool. And what we actually see here, um, it doesn't fit into one atlas anymore. So let's have a quick look here. So you remember this ends in data. There is a viewer for pack files. I'm, I'm not gonna go into this right now, but basically, so we have two atlas files now. And the, the base archive uh, changed, so this is a first atlas file and it's a bit hard to see but this is this is the two other overlays this is the help overlay and this is the explore overlay and the order is it took the biggest one first remember so this is just it's a 240 2048 atlas and it's a 2048 texture so guess what it's it fits in and nothing else fits in. So. so this is step one. It's in the data file. And there's a bit of piece of piece of magic missing right now that is um, the config file should basically say which atlas to load at which point, but this is this is a tiny game. So I just go into the fish app and with every game I ever worked on, doesn't matter um, how professional the team, how big the team, how clean the team, the initialization code always ends up being super long and messy and because because everything is hooked up there and everybody always tries to configure it. And this is already much better. I mean, there is some... Um, the initialization, the layered file system I talked about, and there's some bootstrapping is a bit backwards because we need files before we have the file system initialized, but we need the file system initialization. So, so it's it's a bit of chicken and egg problem, but but basically it says, hey, the bootstrap file system is is the disk file system, which in iOS is relative is my build directory, on Windows it's my build directory. On no, on, on Mac OS, it's my project directory. On Windows, it's my build directory. On iOS, it's my app, app content directory. And then it uh, tries to add the base archive. And if it cannot add the base archive, guess what? Better stop or 
send telemetry and, and try to move on anyway, but we'll get lots of lots of missing textures. The missing texture, the default texture is actually baked into the binary at a different point, so we always get that. Then it tries to get the native file system uh, and, and sets that as, as a data file set, file pass. So, as I said, uh, this, this is a quite common pattern. Um, we're not using singletons because singletons makes two concerns. A, a class doing something, and B, a class ensuring that there's only one of them. So every class should be written in a way that it can have more of them. And then by convention, or the user decides, do I have one default one? So, so the file system, the file system doesn't know it is the only one, but the game does know. And, and singleton are just hidden globals. So this is a in-your-face global. Better be sure what you're doing. So you can have as many file systems as data file systems as you want, but this is a default one. Set it if we want to use it. Um, so this is the safe file system. Most initialization is done. We can can initialize the debug renderer here if you want to. We this this is this part which probably should come from a script, but we initialize all the render effects, and in this case we talk about five, six, seven. <coughs> um, and here's here's the Atlas system. So we basically preload all the atlases that we know of, and, and from then on, the game can just use the texture names inside the atlas. And actually, yeah, so here we manually load the marketing overlay, and, and since we just added a second one, we need to. So we load the atlas. This is a mapping file. And this is the actual PNG. Reason could be that we want for so do do some post processing on on the P, actual PNG color grading or have different versions for different reasons. And but the atlas will stay the same. So we created we added the file to the app, to the tools. It's in the data archive, and we're loading it. So this is a nice. Nice point to actually, yeah, let's. I usually don't do this, but let's use the UI test build because this is a part that will use that thing. Siri, it should all just still work. Okay, there's an instant running. Yeah, my bad. All we did. We added the new texture, and it's it's available wherever we want to use it. So it is still working. Um, it's touching, doing a screenshot right now, touching the screen to start, um, doing the magic continue. I'll, I'll show you the UI test integration at this later point. It, the script says, hey, do a screenshot. I say, yeah, I did a screenshot. Continue. Remember, I was clicking continue a lot, so this is the overlay. Far too big, as as I realize right now. So let's let's write this down. Overlay sizes, and and that's something we fix in the assets, but not today. Not. That's what I like about this kind of to-do list driven approach. Um, you get the you don't get sidetracked. You write it down. You know you don't forget it, but don't do it right now. Do what we came here to do, and not everything else. So doing the second screenshot, and and as we discussed last time, the timing is totally off, and they kind of realize why the timing is off because we <laughs> we are actually setting the distance and messing it up. So yeah, so third screenshot was a nice overlay. Remember, um, we we want to recreate this automatically and for all involved platforms. So test trends through. Let's see the log file. So test completed. So we didn't break anything yet. 
not breaking stuff is always good. So we we added this, and in theory, <coughs> dry throat again, sorry. So, all we need to do is enable the overlay, and we know how to do that. Go back here. And we look into the script, so how, how do we create an overlay? Well, we want an overlay, and we call it zero title, and, and we don't want it southeast, we want it centered. So let's see, and obviously, we want to remove the overlay again. Remember, we need to yield after the screenshot. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out a way to enforce that, but Enable the overlay, request the screenshot, wait a frame, because this will be exactly one frame, and then remove the overlay. So, we changed content. So this is, this is content. When we change content, we need to run the packer, and I'm not gonna run the pack all, I'm just gonna run the pack scripts again. Oops. The lower left corner is a screen lock. Mm. It actually is running the file through a Lua interpreter. So when I when I put junk here, it will say, "Hey, what the hell are you doing?" So catch errors as early as possible instead of debugging hours and then realizing. Oops, I had the wrong window focused while typing on the other laptop or so. <coughs> Pack scripts and, and just to. So all we did, we added the overlays and when we reconverted content to data, we have to repack the OMA file. It says, hey, this, this file has changed. I better package everything. And it's so important to have this automated. I mean, all the manual steps and forgetting, and it would waste so much time. And I can spend this time talking to you now. So let's just build this. Let's just run this and see what happens. <coughs> Starting. Waiting five seconds. Let's go. Enable the title screen. The scaling is broken. Let's, let's, we already talked about the overlay scaling, but maybe we need to be a bit more specific. Um, that's, but, but basically, that's all. All we did. We added it to the Atlas converter, ensured the Atlas is loaded, and added it to the script. And that's it. That's all. So I do a git diff here. Let's play the screen. So it's a bit backwards, but we load it, load the Atlas. We enable it in the script, and we ensure the title. Again, Git being helpful, and and that's it. And and obviously, uh, if I do stuff like this, enable title screen from debug script. Uh, this is work in progress. Well, actually, it's it's done. So let's put it at the bottom here. And actually, this we'll also use to create the, the change log and the update for for the store. But basically, um. This, yeah, wrong keyboard, one wrong screen. This is done, simple as that. 
Shall we do the next one? Wait. <coughs> so. The pack is done. Usually I use, use Sublime Merge. Um, I want to, to warm up with the command line a bit more, so you, you have to stick with me. Um, pack Atlas. Updated the to-do, yes. Updated the script, yes, yes. So git commit, all of that. Added title overlay for two screenshot script. Again, we do the rebase for reasons I mentioned last time. And and this this PNG is huge, um, which reminds me we should probably crush that PNG. Optimize loading screen, and this is where where the second the, the Git module for the for the content comes in and, and git large file system support because git doesn't like big binary blobs at all and now push it and actually if we push it and if we wait i don't know 10 minutes uh, we could check out the ci system and it should say in the in the slack that we use it will just post a hey it's still running i got all the screenshots it's working and by the way i built the windows linux uh, mac version and and here's the ios binary if you want to push it to the store just click here and but but we're not going into ci right now we're going into, into this this game structure and i, I think that's that's super important shall we fix the distance Let's fix the distance. So, so what we do here is we have wait for distance and we have to set distance in meters. And if you remember, um, the distances were all off and, and I realized, okay, why? But let's pretend I don't know why. Something with the distances is wrong. So let's open the game UI. And we have this game UI route and, and there's game, usually there are multiple states like game, non-game, um, meta game, shop, uh, multiplayer game. But in this case, we have pre-game state. Well, in this state, case we only have the game state but we have the game ui which is all the overlays and the debug ui which i just can turn completely off and compile out it let's go into um oh yeah old school initialization um we really need to move initializers to the header file that wasn't possible when this whole thing started so and then here's the initialize uh, have a name for debugging, uh, have a box. It's a horizontal box and set this name to control box. So that's where the controls are. Put the pause button into the control box, uh, put the options button into the control box and and fade it out. So everything's faded out. If it if it's not a release, uh, put put some debug things in there and then and just lay out it. So, but I was, what, what I was really was looking at uh, randomly, I mean, usually I would look here, so I'm searching for anything distance. So, oh, there's a distance label. Distance label sounds, so description, you know, distance label is probably the field where the distance is in. So let's find this symbol. Oh, yeah, it's initialized. It's created. And here. We set the text. So this is the update for the control. We set the text to distance. Where do we get the distance from? Okay, the distance comes from the game. And this is my game. I know all this, but I might be a new developer who just joined the team and has no clue what to look for. So starting from what the user sees and how the data arrives there is, is, is usually a good approach. So get distance in meters, and here you start seeing, wait a second. So 
this is the distance, and this is pixels per meter. And this is a point, I'm a new guy on the team, hey, lead, what's going on here? Or, or my, my coworker sitting next to me, or just check the development wiki for, for documentation and, oh yeah, we, we measure the actual distance in the game internally is measured in pixels. And just for display reasons, we, we convert it to meters. So let's jump here. And there should probably be a comment here that says, hey, this is, this is pixels. Now we do the same thing again, fine in workspace. We initialize to zero again, should be initializer in the header. Um, here we trace it uh, when we're dying, okay. Um, and here for the results, we convert it from, from the distance to the meters. Um, here is the update when I'm playing. Um, there are different modes, don't worry. But basically, we have a ba base speed for the fish in pixels per second and a time step. So we just add it here, fine. Um, here we reset, I guess, that uh, in the initialize. When we, when we cheat and go to the next zone, we actually add the, the distance we traveled to the counter, to the to the total. Um, when we're playing, um, just actually when we are going to a zone, we also add the distance. Um, and this is our set distance in meters. And you see a problem here? This says distance in meters, so this is, no, let's go in. This is distance in meters. And this is distance in meters. And this should be distance in pixels. I'm not gonna change this because this is too much of a change, but distance in meters. So how do I get to pixels? Well, we have this nice pixels per meter, right? Well, my bad. So this looks much better to me and just to, to double check uh, while we're here. Okay, this is just a getter, could probably be const looking at it. Um, const correctness came after creating the game, so, or I started using it after the game, so. And and actually the, the get distance in meters is, is const correct as you see here, and it just does the, the magic. And yeah, so that's all. I did the wrong build. How are we doing for time? I'm getting hungry. Am I always getting hungry during the streams? Yeah, my brain probably uses too much power. So let's let's just abuse the UI build. And let's just run it. The UI test build. I always say UI build, it's the UI test build. So we're running. Nice little overlay. And in the release build, this, this will be gone. So uh, the overlay is behind the UI. Um, might not be what we want, so. Let's let's do this first. So we do the screenshot at fifty meters because we don't mess up the screenshots. Wait, what did? Yeah, I was I was writing down the overlay. Fix render order. 
and got distracted, but I'll just do it again because we want the overlay in front. Let's just put it on the to-do list then. Let's see this again. Actually, let's look at this. Good. While doing this, I'm actually going back to single and swipe far off and then so we're here this is the first wait for continue we enable the cheat we add the overlay screenshot is done so we come here Okay, adding the other overlay. Yep, nicely done. We loaded the zone. We loaded the zone. We broke something. We broke something. So we do the go to zone, we wait for the distance, and then we set the distance. Obviously, this, this number here is wrong. It's, it's, we, we basically jumped from here to here. So let me assume we just have to add the 50 here. And here we jumped from 123 to 250. So let's add the difference here, which is 127, right? Fifty minus 123, and add that to the 87, 214. I could do this in my head, but I want you to follow along what I'm actually calculating and doing this in my head, I'd rather type a stupid, simple equation and be sure the numbers is right than to debug all day long. And now do the old pack script, pack bands, and try this again. And this is a time where I really want the Lua debugger. One, the other game has a Lua console where it shows where the current, which, which client is executed and having an overlay like that would be super cool right now. Uh, it's simple enough so we can follow along. So wait five seconds. Sometimes network stuff is happening here and I just don't want confusion between the script and the, get a statement, sorry, in five seconds, I don't care. We do the title screen again, scaling positioning needs to be fixed. We do the overlay, help find, don't ask why this is two and not one. We go, remove the overlay, kill all the pickups, go to the zone, and then wait for 50. Okay, this is the 123 here. Wait. Wait a second. Oh. <laughs> Remember the problem we have with the screenshots? We request, we enable the overlay, request the screenshot, disable the overlay, and then yield. The screenshot gets queued and is done after the next yield, after I return from the script, but the overlay is already removed. Exactly the same thing happens here. So, A, when we request the screenshot, we yield. 
Yeah, it's, it's just doing the request screenshot. Oh, by the way, do the next step, set distance in meters, set coins, wait for distance. And this wait for distance, um, this wait for distance needs to yield. So, so again, good to have a script, just cursor up, just redo it. Um, The, this is a 2012 MacBook, the small one, and builds so blazingly fast. The, the Windows build takes about eight minutes on my ThinkPad. Um, let's see. Scale and there's a fix, but that's, that's an asset fix. That's easy. One twenty three, give you the screenshot. Jump to wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We need to remember my little calculation here. So the first one is right. How, how can we jump to 250 and then wait for 214? Correct. We forgot to to add these 50. So this is 264. We added a delta on top, and at the bottom we added both deltas, so we have to add them together. Just do this again, and and be happy that this is so fast. Before I replace the hard disk in the system, oh my god. I mean, it was crunching. It sounded like somebody had put some cereal into the hard disk, so not sure what happened there. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Uh, talking and doing. The hardest stuff about streaming. Keeping you entertained while getting my job done. I still love you. Um, yeah, so such a good upgrade to the SSD in here and it was just like 50 bucks and it feels like a brand new machine. Looks like we're wasting a lot of time watching this the game play itself but Every time we do an update, we have to redo the screenshots and we have to do them for four devices. And I'd rather watch this now for an hour or two and then never touch it again or until we want fresher screenshots with different features. And so 264 should be right after the coin rain. This looks nice. Remember? Coin explosion screenshot one. Coin rain screenshots two was the four, sorry, three and four was the overlay. Um, yeah. I'm just going to do a release screenshot. <coughs> but basically, um, let's update the to do. This is done. On here. 
that in run. If you get motion sick, well, look somewhere else. Um, this is done, but um, we scale overlay screenshot overlays to correct size, um, fix title screen. To what do we want? We want to scale with aspect. Scale to size with aspect. And we want the move screenshot overlays above. UI, I guess. And beautiful. Um, I just saw one thing. Not going to do this today. But let's go here. We fix the distance. I think this, this was a, this was good. This was good. I, I like. Um, the background phase we're not getting into. Um, we're going to do the, the scales and stuff. Maybe, maybe I just rescale the assets uh, offline. It's basically load them in GIMP, Krita, Photoshop, whatever you prefer. Um, scale them to 50%. Save them. Done. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with that. Well, maybe I will, but um, one thing. Okay, we fixed the distance. Okay, we didn't commit that. Oh, well, it's it's the distance fix. So, oh, about these, the first letter always means what happened to to so. So when I read a lot of, let me. So when I read a lot of commits, I can instantly get a rough feeling what's going on. So something added, something added, something added, something tweaked or changed or updated. Um, uh, minus means, hey, something was removed. An exclamation mark means, um, hey, we fixed the critical thing here. And so, so it's... it's if you lead a team, you spend a lot of time in this. You're just checking what the team is doing, and, and every little helps. And just having this one column that says, hey, okay, 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 okay. And usually I would prefix them with the issue number, but I'm not using issues for this, so not yet anyway. So this, this column means, hey, we fixed the and, – and it's a bug. It's not critical, so it's not an exclamation mark. Fix the fixed set distance to actually use meters and fix screenshot script um, distances. We rebase it. We rebase it, we push it, and now we run away because it's Saturday evening and whoever comes in Monday morning has to fix those things. No, no, no. When you push, you wait for the CI system to say, hey, this is green. And we're going to wait, we're going to wait, we're going to wait. We're going to cheat and look at the other screen and okay. So I think that's that's it for today. We we fixed we did the two goals and, and sorry wrong screen. Um, we did the two goals we we had planned to do. Um, next time we oh actually actually we also 
fixed the timing. So this is this is nice because I was worried that this is going to be nightmare. But next time we fix overlays, sizes, scales, render order. I think that's a good one. And um, I usually work like this. I decide what do I want to achieve. I, I usually know how much time I have. So today I knew I had about 90 minutes, and but I knew I wanted to do the overview. So what can I squeeze into these 90 minutes? And let me... What can I squeeze into these 90 minutes? Set a goal and then... then aim for that, it helps to focus, not to get distracted. Uh, I find other stuff along the way that was not part of the initial goal. I mean, if I had completely broken it, okay, fix it, but is it something I absolutely need to do now? Go down a rabbit hole and don't get to my goal. If not, put it on the list so so I won't forget it later and just move on. And, and achieving the goals you set in, in a time frame is a very important skill. And, and the more senior you become, the more it's expected of you to know how long stuff takes. And sometimes that also means budgeting for it and not investing more. I mean, there's so much stuff I could have done today to make this even nicer, but the goal was to get the screenshots and we got the screenshots. So, yeah. That was today's session. I hope you're still happy. I, I love my one follower I got. Um, hope this is going to be more. I, I'm enjoying this. Um, starting next time or some sometime, I, I will. I decided to go a bit into the meta level. Why am I doing this? How am I doing this? Um, just move out of what's actually going on for the game. And this is mostly for me, but maybe you learn some things there too. Um, I also want to tell you a bit more about myself so you know where I come from, what I did, um, why you should listen to me because who's that guy? Maybe everything you do does is wrong. I hope I convinced you today that, that some of the things I do are right because this was pretty easy. Um, I'll be traveling uh, tomorrow and Monday, but Maybe I'll do a quick session tomorrow noonish European Central European time. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I'll leave the archive on. Maybe I do the quick game Krita session for rescaling. Uh, maybe I won't. Uh, I'll definitely be back Tuesday evening. That being said, I get a big IKEA delivery on Tuesday, so I, I'm not sure about the timing, but. From now on, I'll aim for 6.30 Central European time when I put the, put the your time zone on the slides. Well, thanks for that. See you soon, and I hope you had fun. Uh, give me some feedback. Thanks.